What is going on YouTube people? We are headed out back to the water tonight with my buddies Thad and Josh. Getting a really late start, so I'm in a bit of a hurry. It's about 5.30 right now. We're supposed to leave about 15 minutes to a half hour ago, but got out of work a little bit late. Um, tonight's gonna be a lot of fun. We're headed out to the big water, chasing those big smallmouth bass, and I think they're gonna start pushing up shallow into that fall pattern sort of stuff. The water's cooling down, which it never got warm. The air is cooling down, which that never got warm. And uh, it's only about 75 degrees right now. It gets really cold overnight. This morning there was a really heavy fog um, pretty much everywhere after a little bit of rain that we got. So these fish should be moving shallow. They should be moving into that fall pattern stuff. Uh, and if that's the case, hopefully we'll get on some big numbers. I also have an agenda to film some stuff for uploaded fishing. You guys saw me do a lot of this stuff last year. Um, but I really want to get into the upload of fishing stuff at least for these last couple of months while I'm on these fish and hopefully put some really cool submissions together because my buddy Thad's coming out with one and it's going to be awesome so I really need to come out with something to compete with that. But we're going to get out to the water, we're going to go meet Thad and Josh here in a couple minutes and then go catch some big smallmouth bass. Only about 10 minutes after I told him I'd be here, which isn't really that bad of timing considering. So we're going to hurry up. These guys are going to get their stuff strapped in the boat and we're going to go fishing pretty quick here. The boat's a mess. I haven't cleaned it in a long time. But we got to get out on the water. First cast of the night. Right now I'm at where I want to be cast. There's one. No, no, no. What is that? That was a small one. This is a big old black smallie. Just broke me off. Oh my Atlanta. This is a big old black smallmouth. Hand me that, toss that buoy out. Whoop. On a crankbait, I knew I hit the rocks. I just didn't think it was gonna snap me off just like that. Holy. So, see those fish right out there? Like that. What, what? Okay, I still cannot. Go. Those are fish, right? Right. All right here. Those are fish. The blue marks and stuff? Yeah, up off the bottom. There are so many fish here right now. I broke off a big one. Josh caught a big one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Literally, he the boat. Yeah, he jumped a good I know, because I was here. working the lure up out of the bottom. <laughs> I hope I got that on camera. I probably didn't. Yep. Got, got one? Yep. Oh, it's a better fish. Daddy likey. Oh, he's bird dog. Here he goes. Stay down. He's staying deep, too. Ooh, ooh. Might be a drum. Oh! Just. Oh! Dude, that's a big smallmouth. Oh, good work. Thanks, man. Oh. Nailed it. 5XD perch color. Dude, there's a whole massive school of fish down there. Left side, other side. I think I'm trying to rush everything way too freaking fast. I just need to settle down for a half a second. Make smart decisions on the water. Oh my, Atlanta, the smallest smallmouth in the world. It's a giant tube. What is wrong with that tube? Three quarter ounce tube, tiny smallmouth. 
<laughs> yeah, inside the tube. No, here, hold on, hold on. Don't flip. Not with that crankbait, or not with that bait. Here. Good fish. That's a nice one. Good work. There's a big one. Very nice. Good net job, man. On the big chunky tube. Chunker. Chunker, chunker, chunker. Cool. Cracking that big old tube. I think what they did is when I snapped that tube up, that fish reacted to it. Yeah. And he Wait, just I'm crushed it. Cracking. I mean, Gotta crack that tube. Yep. Giddy up. Stay down. Oh, oh that's a big old drum. Dang it. Just a drum. It's a huge drum though. Holy. <laughs> huge drum. Oh! <laughs> that's, that's, state, that's as big a drum as I think I've ever seen. State record drum here. Oh my! How's that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah! That was a good Yep. Somebody found a fish. Oh, that was so awkward. Yeah. Here I can. Oh, oh. oh. We're good. He kind of jumped over the net. Yeah. You see this huge light? Huh? You see this huge light? Would you like to swim in it? I wouldn't feel oh, bad. Oh my god. Dude, it's like I have to snap it and then let it sit there. They're picking it up on the drop down? No, nah, they're just, I snap it, watch. It's gonna hit bottom. And they're gonna hit it when. There it was. Oh god dang it. They're picking it right up. It's like I snap it and then they come and get it. Yeah. It's like it gets their attention. It's like they need to follow it and then when you go to stop it, they come and get it. Like that, when you're doing that, kind of just kill it. Big one? You just let it sit? Yeah, I just let it sit and you picked it up and I dead sticked it. Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> When, when we lose these fish, we're screwing ourselves. They're going. they're going straight back, and they release that pheromone. And it's alerting everything else down there. Yeah. We could probably have about 23 pounds in the boat right now. We've lost. We've lost a lot. Five? You lost I lost about a five. I lost about a four. Let's just underestimate. Oh, my Lanta. That might be a three. Yeah, don't, you don't have to horse him. You're good. Let's just hope it's a, not a drum. Oh, he got it funny. Fun Been off the water for about an hour now, and you guys saw a lot of craziness tonight. You saw a lot of the highs and lows of fishing. You saw us catch big fish. You saw us lose big fish. You saw us running to the right, running to the left, kind of all over the place. And a lot of that had to do with the limited amount of time that we had on the water tonight. As I mentioned a couple different times, we got on the water about 7 o'clock was when we launched the boat. 
had to be off the rudder around 8.30, so we only had about an hour and a half actually going out there and fishing. And when that happens, a lot of times, what can happen as an angler is we try to do way too much. When at the end of the day, there are two things you need to execute on when you only have a little bit of time on the water. You need to figure those fish out quickly, and you need to figure out how to put them in the boat effectively. We figured them out really quick. We had them dialed in within the first 10 to 15 minutes out there, but we didn't effectively put them in the boat, and you guys saw that um, really with me losing a whole bunch of fish. Now, I'm going to go over the setups, the rods, reels, techniques that I was using tonight to hook these fish, catch these fish, and try to put them in the boat because I think we were on the right pattern. We just didn't capitalize on all those opportunities. As I mentioned, I probably don't have to mention that much more. So the first technique we dialed in relatively quickly was throwing a big crankbait. This here is the Six Sense Lures 300 DD. Josh caught his on the Strike King 5XD, um, and the one I broke off really early on was on a Six Sense Lures uh, C15, Cloud 9 series bait. But what you do is you cast this bait out there, make a really long cast with this bait, and you start by cranking it really fast to get this bait to dive down and hit bottom. Well, once it hits bottom, what you want to do is slow your retrieve down. All you want to do is kind of creep this bait along the bottom and be able to feel it pick apart all of that rock, all of that different bottom composition. It gives those fish a really good opportunity to track this bait, follow this bait, and eat it. But the way that you're going to trigger that strike is by changing your retrieve. Whether you speed it up really quick for a reel or two, a crank or two, or you can slow it down and stop and pop it. That's going to allow that bait to kind of kick out to the side or move differently. Give those fish that, uh, make those fish react to that bait, which is why they call it a reaction bite. The rod that I'm throwing this on is a 7 foot 3 cranking rod. I have it on a 6 4 to 1 reel with 12 pound test fluorocarbon. The second technique, and the one that I switched to a little bit later on in the night, was cracking a tube. Now I was doing it kind of unconventionally. Um, I was throwing a three and a half inch tube with a three quarter ounce football head on 15 pound fluorocarbon line and a bait casting rod. And the reason I was doing this rather than fishing it on a spinning rod was because I'm able to crack this bait a lot harder. And it's gonna give this bait more of a reaction strike than uh, if you're throwing it on a spinning rod where you're not able to get as much movement of this bait. Also, when you're throwing this really heavy weight, you need a heavier action rod. So I make a long cast with this bait, and if you guys go back and watch the footage, you'll see me take two hands, hopefully you can see, you can see me take two hands, snap this rod up, and what that's going to make this do is this tube's going to shoot up off the bottom and then sink back down. But that's actually not a lot of times when I got that bite. What I think was happening was this tube would shoot up off the bottom. When it would settle back down to the bottom, and I let it sit there was when I was getting those bites. That tube would call those fish in, and those fish would be curious, come on over to my bait, see it sitting there, see it sitting there. Then they would hammer it down into the bottom, and that's when I would get my bites is when I would let that bait sit there on the bottom. And I was throwing it on a 7-foot-2 medium heavy action rod, um, a 7-1-to-1 reel. You want a reel that you can pick up a lot of slack with very, very quickly. And as I mentioned, 15-pound fluorocarbon. I ended up breaking off a good one right at the very end. And uh, again, it was just laziness, me not checking my line and retying. Tonight at best was chaotic. My buddy Thad put it best in his Instagram post. Um, but we basically had the shot at about a 20-pound bag of smallmouth. We ended up losing a couple right at the boat. I lost that one. It jumped over the net and came off. Um, and essentially, it was just one of those nights where we were rushing around and it caused us to make errors. Uh, one thing that I recommend, one thing that I learned, and the reason that I'm making this video is to teach you guys from my mistakes. So when you're out on that water and you have a time crunch, don't be focused on the next cast. Don't be focused on what you're going to be doing next, what, where you're going to move to, the next bait you're going to be throwing. Focus on each cast. If I would have taken the 20 seconds it takes me to tie a Palomar knot, retied real quick and made my, made my cast, I think I would have put every single fish in the boat that bit my bait tonight. I was so focused on looking around, trying to figure out what those fish were going to do next that I missed what was happening in the moment. Ended up uh, kind of missing some of these fish, missing some of these clues that were going on around me tonight. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed. This was a lot of fun. You saw a lot of highs and lows, as I mentioned already, kind of all over the place. If you enjoyed it, please go down and give it a thumbs up. If you guys haven't already, click the little notification bell. It's going to let you guys know when I post videos. It will literally send you a notification and say, Ben Noak has posted a video, and uh, you guys can come over here and watch it. So please do that. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, also, check out my partners down in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions or comments, interact with me in the comment section below. Add me on social media. Uh, and as always, guys, thank you for watching. Take care. Tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion.